Yeah, hi everyone. So welcome back. My name is Shahid, and uh, the topic for today's video will be authentication. And in the end, we'll also see the methods for you know uh, bypassing these authentications. So let's uh, starting. Uh, we'll we'll start with uh, what is authentication. So basically, authentication is a method of identifying incoming requests to access restricted data. So oh, you know there are uh, many data that are very sensitive or you know which uh, cannot be given access to uh, you know uh, everyone. So in these type of cases, you know uh, when the people who are uh, hosting this uh, data, uh, they want to uh, make sure that the people who are accessing this are the genuine people or you know the people who are only supposed to see these data. So in these uh, kind of cases, uh, the authentication comes into picture. So basically, it is compared uh, to those in a file on the database for authorization. So in order to uh, you know get access to these restricted data, uh, there will be uh, different kinds of authentication uh, that will have to pass. The user will have to pass so that they'll be uh, able to access these. So these credentials or uh, these uh, you know uh, the authentication methods. So these are always uh, compared to a file in the database. So that is the back uh, backend. And once the credentials and the uh, store details that are stored on the database are matched, then only the user will be able to access the restricted data. So this is uh, basically an uh, idea about uh, how what is authentication and how the authentication works. So let's see uh, what are the three factors of authentication. So first one will be something the user knows. So something the user knows. Uh, what does uh, what does this mean? So basically you can see on the screen uh, it's showing us password. So uh, that's correct. So password is something the user knows. So this is uh, the first factor of authentication where the pa uh, password is known by the user. Or you know uh, something the user knows. So uh, this is uh, the first factor for authentication, and the second one is something the user is. So basically, this means uh, you know the user needs to be physically available, or uh, you know he should be able to uh, be present in order to you know uh, give authorization. So uh, since uh, you can see the GIF, so it's mentioning a fingerprint. So fingerprint is something the user is. So here. Uh, you know different types of uh, you know uh, authentications can be uh, biometric authentication or retina scanning voice uh, matching face match so these are the awesome examples for uh, something the user is so which is the second factor for authentication and the third and the last factor for authentication is something the user has so uh, what does the user has so that he'll be able to authenticate himself uh, in order to you know get access to uh, different kinds of data so, uh, for example, let's take as an RFID card. So, RFID card is nothing but you know it's a physical card uh, which which looks like an ATM card which needs to be scanned in order to get access. So, these kind of authentications are basically you know uh, used in corporate companies or you know huge uh, organizations so that the user uh, can scan their uh, RFID card or their ID card so that they'll be able to uh, get access into the building. Now, uh, if uh, other the other than the RFID cards, uh, there are you know different types of uh, of physical uh, authentication methods. Another example for something the user has can be used, uh, you know, so where a few people uh, prefer you know using a USB uh, device or you know uh, manually creating a USB device token. So only after uh, inputting that USB device into the computer, the computer will be you know uh, able to access. So uh, if there will be uh, two types of authentication in these kind of cases. So one, uh, the USB device uh, needs to be present with the user, and the uh, password needs to be known. So basically, uh, once the user uh, enters this uh, USB device into the computer, it will then go to the next step, which is entering the password. So only after these two steps, the user will be able to get access to the computer. So this is like an uh, you know uh, a next uh, an extra layer of security. So that even if someone uh, knows the password to your account without the USB device, uh, they won't be able to access it. Next, uh, let's see what are the different types of authentication. So biometric authentication. So as I said, this is the second factor. So something the user is. So in biometric authentication, uh, you know, fingerprint is considered. Uh, the retina scanning. So that is, you know, basically the eye uh, scanning for the eyes, and then um, face matching. So you know, uh, almost everyone has these days on their phones. Uh, you know, the face match uh, unlocking of your phone, and then uh, voice matching. So these are the different kinds of uh, biometric authentication. So next will be a uh, password-based authentication. So this is the something the user knows. So basically, you know, these are the uh, general or typical uh, type of authentication that are used in the day-to-day -day world, where you have to enter the password in order to uh, you know access data or get in uh, you know log into your uh, account. So even you know logging into your phone or you know unlocking your phone also 
uses uh, password based authentication and then certificate based authentication so basically uh, you know uh, this is how how this works is so everything every computer or every device uh, on working on the internet or you know working uh, they have a unique ids or unique uh, identification numbers so using these uh, you know identification unique identification numbers we can also authenticate a device so that you know uh, they will be able to access different kinds of data and then multi factor authentication so almost everyone is aware of this so multi factor authentication is nothing but you know uh, you will initially enter your uh, password and then the otp or a different uh, token will be generated and sent to your uh, div different device or you know your uh, email address or your phone number so this is um, the multi factor authentication so you know uh, basically uh, it's a very uh, safe way or you know to handle your uh, accounts or data so we you know uh, it's always better to act enable multi factor authentication on all the devices or wherever uh, it is you know available so that your account or your data will be secure so next uh, you know otp authentication bypass so otp is also one kind of authentication that is used uh, in nowadays so more mo most of the times otp will be used for you know uh, multi factor authentication so once you enter your password then there will be an otp generated to your uh, mobile phone that has been registered uh, in that account or whatever you are accessing and then once you enter the otp you will be able to uh, get it to the uh, data access the data or get into the account so let's see uh, what are the you know there are a lot of different methods uh, to bypass otps so here uh, i'll just show you a screenshot since uh, we won't be able to show a live demo uh, so the live demo and the different you know there are many as i said there are many different uh, methods or steps to bypass the otps so these uh, live demos and different steps you know uh, will be taught in the trainings uh, so once you join uh, with us so here uh, you can see this is a screenshot of you know basically uh, the otp bypass uh, that i have done uh, previously so in the first screenshot uh, that is you know the top of screenshot you can see uh, something written as status 0 and then message incorrect otp please try again so basically what this means is i had entered a wrong otp in the authentication field so this is the response for that uh, authentication you know a failed authentication so basically it says that status is 0 and then message you know what the message that will be displayed once you have entered wrong otp so that is incorrect otp please try again so one of the method to bypass otp is you change status from 0 to 1 so basically computer uh, you know works in a language of zeros and ones so zero is false and one is true so that's how basically uh, it works so here what i have done is you know uh, just cha uh, changing the status from 0 to 1 and then changing the message to correct otp and then forwarding the request will enable uh, you to you know bypass the otp and get access to the uh, data or the account that you're trying to get in so this is just uh, one of the method uh, of how we can uh, bypass the otp so basically uh, for this uh, we use a proxy tool that is called as burp suite so even uh, that will be uh, you know uh, uh, clearly or uh, in detail will be uh, taught to you ta thought to you in the training so uh, that's all uh, for this video uh, thank you